Hi, this is Dr. Barb with Colorado State University Extension. I'm on the Western Region and uh, the STEM specialist over here. And today we are doing our last episode of Virus Cycles, uh, Explorations in Biology and Epidemiology. So last, last one we did um, was getting ready for this. And we made our, oh, I'll show you in a second. We made our baking soda water. And we made our red cabbage juice water. And then we made our cells. There's me. And our family and our friends. So let me move this down so you can see everything. Here we go. So what we're doing to today, and if you're looking at the, um, the lesson, uh, it starts on page five, and it's right under the reflect. So we're on the reflect section now. And we're looking at two different common viruses that we catch. One is the uh, just the common seasonal flu, and the other is COVID-19. And what is the difference between them is the seasonal flu is contagious, but not as contagious as COVID-19. So the seasonal flu, for every 1.3 pe or I'm sorry, for every person, they infect 1.3 people. So you can't infect one third person. So what it means is about every three people will infect four people. And uh, the COVID-19 is every person who has um, the coronavirus can infect up to two and a half people. But you can't ha infect half a person. So what it means is every two people can infect up to five people. So it's much more contagious. So in this game, we're setting up, it's, it's, a, it's like a game. And we have our cups and your parent or another um, person in your family uh, put filled the cups up with water. Ignore the label, sorry, I'm just using old jars. And they filled it up with water, all except for one of them. One of them they put the baking soda water in. So you can see it's about half gone. And one of these 10 cups, I have my family over here. So it's me, my brother, Eddie, my mom, and my dad. Oh, and one thing I have, my mom is in a red cup. So I can show you if you can't see the, the liquid clearly what to do with that. But everybody else are just in, in um, canning jars. And then my friends and um, friends from all all over and one of these people either somebody in my family or one of my friends one of these people oops let's get Stephanie in we can't leave Stephanie out there we go there's Stephanie peeking in one of these 10 people is infected. That means they have the baking soda water instead of just plain water. And we'll figure that out. So I'm going to move my friends over here carefully because I don't want to spill anything. I'm prone to doing that kind of thing. I have my number cube right here and the, the lesson does include a number cube if you don't have one. You can make it out of paper. They're not as good, but they do work. You have to play a little bit with it to make sure that it's well balanced. So the number cube, where did I put that? There it is. Is on page nine, and you would just make a copy of page nine and then fold it together. And the directions for folding the number cube are here. But if you have a, if you have one, you don't need it. you don't need that. Okay, so. COVID-19 is not nearly as contagious. So if I roll the dice and I get a one, two, or three, it means that I do not, we do not exchange water. Or that means that I didn't catch it, I didn't spread it. If I roll a four, five, or six, I don't know if you can see that's a six. If I roll a four, five, or six, then it means I did spread the, the 
uh, flu or if the person who has it spreads it to me. And you're going to run the each one, so each treatment. Seasonal flu is one treatment, and COVID-19 is a second treatment. You're going to run those with five trials each. So we run the same thing with one, two, and three, no exchange the water, four, five, and six, you exchange the water for the seasonal flu, and you do that five times. And then on the other hand, with the COVID-19, if you have a one, I think I just set it went up with a one. If you have a one, you do not change water. But since it's so effective, if you have a two, three, four, five, or six, you do exchange water. And at the end, we'll talk a little bit about how you can protect yourself a little bit more so that if you have it, you don't spread it. Or if you visit somebody who has it, you can better protect yourself from it. OK, so the last thing is we have our data sheets here. And each square has a diagonal line. So in the top of the diagonal, you put the roll that you had. And on the bottom, that's for later, when we determine if we did catch or we did not catch the, either the flu or the coronavirus. So this one, and it's color-coded. This is uh, a drawing from the CDC of what um, the typical seasonal flu looks like. And the coronavirus has the little coronavirus symbol right there. Also on the top, it's labeled um, COVID-19, which is the disease that coronavirus causes, and seasonal flu, which is what type A or type B um, virus causes for the flu. OK, a lot of talking. So let's go. We're going to start with the flu. And we're going to do just one basic trial. OK, so where am I? I am here. And the first thing I do is I want to go visit a friend. So I'm going to visit my friend Tommy. Let me separate this so you can see the roll of the dice. I roll the dice, and it's a four. So that means, and you notice each jar has their own spoon in it. And I don't want to put my spoon in any of the other jars, and I don't want to put their spoon into my jar. So just to, now really, this would be somebody sneezing on us. But we start with our friend, and we put two spoons of our friend's liquid into our jar. Let me get my spoon out of the way, because I'm kind of doing this blind. Like that. Now I didn't touch uh, Tommy's spoon to mine. And I stir it up, and then I put two spoons of my water into Tommy's jar, and I stir his up, and then I'm going to go home. Now, if we get sick, we're going to spread it to our family. That's just the way it is. So I put two spoons into my dad. I put two spoons into my mom. I know you can't see this really well. I'll show you better with Eddie. We used to call Eddie, Eddie spaghetti meatballs and jam. I don't know why, but we did. And. Then to make sure that my cup gets filled back up, I stir everybody, I'm just going to take two spoons of each of my family and put it back into my cup. So that's just to make sure that my cup gets enough water to share with all my friends. And then finally, my brother, Eddie. Now I have another brother. I only did this with, with four family members. You don't have to do it with everybody, everybody in your family. Just pick four of them. 
I could have done my brother Rich too, but I just picked Eddie. He's my oldest brother. Okay, so now I've done Tommy. We have visited Tommy. We played. We were playing together, and then we went home. So Tommy goes to his house. I'm going to move him out of the way. I'm just going to put him on the floor. So it's a little less crowded here. And then I do that again. Okay. Now I'm going to visit my friend Tina. So we get together and we play. Now if Tina's sick, I might catch what she has, but I might not. Because the flu is, is, is not always, I mean, you can, be, you can be around somebody who has the flu and you just don't get it because you're taking care of yourself and you're not doing the things that, that cause you to pick up the flu. So let's roll the dice, and it's a three, which means we do not exchange, let me show you three, we do not exchange the water. So then Tina goes back to her house, and we had fun. Now Tina is the one who had this. I just dumped Tommy over on the floor. Um, then she had it, but I didn't catch it. But I go home, and I didn't exchange fluid with Tina, the, the water with Tina, so I don't have to do it with my family. Okay, so my next friend, let's, Audrey, she was my best friend in high school. And I, so we're playing together, and I roll the dice. If it's a one, two, and three, we don't exchange. Oops. Oops. It's a four. So four, five, and six means we do exchange fluids, the water. Okay, she sneezed on me. Pretty gross, huh? But people do. Or or we were playing with something and and uh, now I start, I put her fluid into my her water into my cup, and I put my water into her cup. And then I go back home. And I do the same thing with my family. I put spoonfuls into my family. Now you can do this with real people. One of the reasons why I set this up with the, the paper representations of family and friends is because we might we might be under um, stay at home again if we have a spike in our uh, COVID-19 illness, or your county still might not be out of that yet. So this is a way you can do the activity, but you can instead have your friends just hold the cup and and just do this same activity, but instead you're working with the real people. But if we if you can't do that, then you can do it with the real paper, paper dolls of your friends. Okay, and then you want to make sure that you get fluid back from your family so that your cup isn't empty. So I just put two spoons from my dad, two spoons from my mom, and two spoons from my brother. Okay, and then remember, each time you're writing down the roll of the dice so that you can verify it, whether you contracted it from that person or not. And we will um, just let the pretend that we do it with the others, okay? So um, I've got to show you this. Three. So there's a three. And I'm playing with Michael, which means Michael goes home, I go home, and we don't exchange fluid. We don't exchange water in our cups. And then I go visit my friend Drew. And let's see what happens. Oh, oh, a four, which means we do. So Drew gives me two spoons of his liquid. And remember, don't touch your spoon to Drew or Drew's spoon to you. Because you don't want to contaminate your spoons. 
and you mix them up and mix them up. And then the last one is my friend Stephanie. And Drew and Stephanie are the two people that I'm working with on all these films. So I put them in my friends. But they're also my colleagues. Okay, so, oops, I forgot. I get so excited I forget to roll the dice. Oh, and that's a three. So Stephanie and I do not. Exchange fluids. Alrighty, so we've, we've um, rolled the dice and decided, uh, determined if we're going to catch the flu from each other. And every time I went home, I shared the water with my family. And I wrote down each person I visited in the order that I visited them. And now it's time to determine if we have caught the flu. Now, one of the bottles, I mean, sorry, one of the cups, one of my friends has baking soda water. And baking soda is a base. And red cabbage juice is an indicator. It means that it changes color to indicate if the liquid that it's in is an acid or a base. So if it's an acid, it turns pink. And if it's a base, it turns blue. Or if it's a strong base, it turns green. So we, we can then, and we're using that to simulate whether we caught it. Okay, so I'm going to start with me. Let me put it this way. And what I do is I pour I don't know if you can see that. That's blue. I caught the flu. That's a little poem. Well, which one of my friends gave me the flu? Let's start with Tommy. Now notice that I take Tommy's spoon out of his, his jar. And I'm sorry, I'm peeking over. Let me stand up so I can do this a little better. And I pour. Whoa, Tommy does not have the flu. You see it's purple. I'm standing behind it and my shirt is purple, so let me hold this up. There we go. You can see it's purple. So on here, I record me. I change color to blue, and I can't write upside down. No matter how hard I try, I've never been able to do that. So I write down blue in that. Tommy is purple. Okay, let's go to my next friend. I then went to visit Michael. And I take Michael's spoon. I'm going to move Tommy and me out of the way. And I take Michael's spoon. And I pour a little cabbage juice into it. Now let's see what color Michael turns. Michael stays purple. Okay, so Michael is purple. So he did not have the flu. Okay, so let's try. Let's see, my next friend is Audrey. Let's see if Audrey has the flu. Oops, I'm turning it the wrong way so you can't see it. There we go. So let's put our spoonful of the red cabbage juice in there. Uh-oh. Audrey had the flu. Blue. So it looks like I caught the flu from Audrey and then I passed it on to my friends. Let's see if I passed it on. Now remember, we rolled the dice, so I might have visited a friend, and this is before you start feeling sick. You have the flu for a couple of days uh, without feeling sick, so that's why um, you you go out and visit friends because you don't realize you're sick yet. Let's see if I gave it to Tina. If I rolled the dice one, two, or three, we might have played together. Oh, Tina didn't get it. That's good. 
So put Tina aside. How about my friend Drew? Let's see if Drew, if I gave it to Drew. Now, what do you think if if I have the flu? Do you think I gave it to my family? Oh, Drew, I bet you're breathing a sigh of relief. You stayed purple. I did not give it to you. I wonder if Stephanie is as lucky. Stephanie's lucky. So out of my friends, if I rolled a one, two, or three, it meant I did not spread that to my friends. If I rolled a four, five, or six, it meant I did. So now let's look at the family, right? Oh, let me put my camera down. I'm not done yet. So I always use the spoon that's in the cup or the jar. Add a little bit of Now you see that's turning blue. I gave it to my brother, Eddie. This is my dad. Let's see if I gave it to my dad. And you see his jar is turning lightly blue. I gave it to my dad. Now with my mom, I, I picked a red cup in particular because if you have cups that are not clear, you can still do this activity. And what you do, is it exactly the same, but you can't tell what color this is because it's in a red cup. So you just pull the spoon up and hold it over, and this is blue. blue. I can see it as very faint, but I can see that it's blue. So you can still do it with, with um, different colored cups. Now your family is a lot more dilute because you're always exchanging the water, and sometimes you get plain water from a friend or you get water that's and then contaminated. So it just it just is uh, lighter for your family. And then when you're done, be sure to put the lid on. And now you have it set up. Oh, I forgot to write this down. Tina. Tina's purple, so I did not give it to her. And I forgot to write down the rolls of the dice, but that's for me to check. And Drew. Where'd Drew go? He's purple and Stephanie's purple. Because we didn't, we, they had one, two, or three. But my family is all blue. And then repeat this. So you take everything apart and you rinse it out and then you have your parent just like you did uh, in the prior instructions, you have your parent reset everything. So they fill the cups up or the jars up with plain water, nine of them, and they put the, your paper doll friends and family back on, and one of the jars gets the baking soda. So it, the parent might need to make more baking soda each time. I just add a little bit more, like a tablespoon of baking soda, and fill it back up each time I do this so that I have enough baking soda. And then you do trial two, and you repeat it five times. And the reason that we're doing this is we're setting it up like an experiment. Because sometimes nobody will have the flu, because you play with the friend who is the person who originally had it, and they didn't give it to you. You washed your hands. You didn't touch anything that they touched, so you played safely with them, and then you can play. Now, with COVID-19, it's like just talking can spread it. So they said it's very contagious. But flu is, is contagious, but not nearly as much as the COVID-19 is. So uh, then you can, uh, at the end, you can see how many people had it, how many people didn't get it. And most of all, this is called contact tracing. So we can go down the list. You have the order that you saw your friends. You started with Tommy. He's not sick. Then you went to see Michael. He's not sick. Then you went to Audrey. She was sick. So she was the person who, who spread it to you. And then you started spreading it or not spreading it to your friends. So 
if um, contact tracing means that everybody you saw after Audrey, they would contact and they would see if they have it. And if they do, then they would have to trace all of their friends that they saw. So Audrey had it, and you also gave it to your mom, dad, and Eddie. That's pretty lucky. Usually, just randomly, it ends up where you give it to more people than, than you're just your family. But you give it to your family. So then when you do the COVID-19, we have everything reset. But instead, when you roll the dice, if it's a one, two, or if it's a two, three, four, five, or six, you change water in your cup. If it's a one, whew, you lucked out. You didn't, you didn't pass it on. And you find that the infection rate in those should be a lot higher. You might randomly hit the one on the person who was sick and don't spread it to anybody else. That would be good. Okay, so this is the, this is the contact tracing part of how we analyze disease. And then those people um, would get treatment or, or they would be uh, quarantined for two weeks to make sure that they don't spread it to anybody else. And that's basically how uh, any kind of contagious disease um, operates. Is it, It's called epidemiology. And um, the last big one was with the Ebola. And Ebola is not as contagious, but it is really deadly. So it's a good thing that we caught that one early so it didn't spread as far. Um, and uh, if you have any, any questions, read through everything again. And um, I hope you certainly had fun. Now, this is the last in our series on viral cycles. And I would like to thank Drew and Stephanie for all their help with this. And uh, there, <laughs> wait a minute, there's Stephanie. Let me get Drew. I'm looking for you, Drew. When I drew Drew, I made him, he looks kind of evil, but he's not. He's a really nice guy. <laughs> and I thought, Oh, you might get a kick out of that, so I'll leave them looking this way. <laughs> anyway, so um, hope you had fun, and we'll get back to more some, some more STEM fun videos um, to include with these. So happy STEMing. We'll see you later. <laughs>